Welcome back to the Iwaki Show, and today we are talking about the craziness that is the wild card race in the East. So right now, it is being led by the Panthers and the Islanders, both tied with 89 points, but the Florida Panthers have been on an absolute tear as of late, which is fantastic for them. I mean, the playoffs looming so near, and they... We're such a strange team to watch this season from being, I mean, we all know the President's Trophy te team last year to this year being just a mid-team at best, and they're finally getting hot at the right time. If there was ever a time to get hot, it would be now. 6-4-0 in their last 10, five-game winning streak against Toronto, Montreal, Columbus, Buffalo, and now Ottawa, where they beat Ottawa yesterday in a crazy matchup. What a hell of a game that was against Ottawa. 7-2, to two, Alex the Lion roars. <laughs> Anyways, uh, getting like, what, 57 saves or something? What an absolute... It, it's so funny. The Panthers, a team that some teams get so unlucky when it comes to getting goaltenders, right? Some teams just can never find a good goalie. And here are the Panthers. Now, you can have your opinions about Bobrovsky, right? He can be pretty stellar to, like, usually, like, a, a C-level goaltender at best. Most of the time. But he's still a average goalie, right? At best, you could say he's just an average passable goalie. Pretty bad otherwise. Spencer Knight. They have Spencer Knight. Okay. Huge deal there. They recently, in the past few seasons, they had Chris Drieger, who's kind of a nothing now. But when he had his little sin in Florida, he looked pretty okay. Guess who drafted Jacob Markstrom? Yeah, the Florida Panthers. Guess who? And now they've got Alex Lyon coming up now. So Florida, a team that's not, I don't want to say lucky, but a team that just is fortunate that just keeps getting good goalie after good goalie. If they can find out a way to get rid of Bobrovsky's contract, which I do think they should do, try to get Carlson in return. It's a shorter contract, blah, blah, blah. Makes sense all around. But Florida, just an absolute tear, having an incredible goaltender in net and Alex the Lyon. Fantastic, fantastic run in Ottawa. What a way to go out with a bang. Going in there trying to kill Alex the Lion, apparently, with Kachuk and all of them. And they try to kill the Panthers squad for eliminating them out of the playoffs because things looked bad early on in the game. It just kept getting worse and worse. I understand the frustration. I've been there before. So it makes sense, but Ottawa nixed out of the race with a just an incredible game to watch if you missed it go watch the highlights it was fantastic or if you can watch a replay of it on like hulu or whatever go find it it was crazy but the islanders are tied with them right ahead right behind them and the panthers and the islanders not safe for either of them they're tied with each other but they're also even if they were the only two teams really in contention they gotta beat each other so they don't end up playing the bruins who i've said multiple times now the islanders that is their worst fear i gotta say six three and one so they're doing okay as of late they beat toronto seven to two and this is a fact i want to bring up is that they're very sketchy when it comes to the teams they play they beat toronto seven to two so Pretty good team in Toronto, beating them 7-2, to unlikely for a team that I would say is a pretty lack of defense. I mean, pretty good at defense, not very good at offense. And the Islanders beat an offensive team 7-2, to so there's that. My, uh, Buffalo, then they lose in a shutout to Buffalo. Then they go on and beat the Jersey Devils 5-1, to but then they lose nothing to 5 to the Lightning, and then they march back a few days later and beat them 6-1. to So the Islanders are a very inconsistent team. They're either pretty good or they're just the worst another day, and they got to get things under control. They got three games left to, under, to manage that against Philadelphia, Washington, and Montreal. So the Islanders, their path to the end, at most, if they get those three wins right, they're going to get to 95 points at so far. And I think they could do it. Philadelphia, I think this should be a good win for them. Washington, I don't know. I have a just Washington and Philadelphia. I don't know why, but I have like a feeling Washington's just going to win that one. And then Montreal, I think they're going to win that one. But overall, those three games should be pretty good matchups for the Islanders to pad, in the, pad their stats up and get a good a playoff spot for a team like the Panthers with Toronto and Carolina coming up next and even Washington really they do have a a harder path to go on against but they did beat Toronto I they can definitely beat Washington and Carolina might be a little bit of a thwart in their path and it could be a team that they end up playing in the first round too so that's a big win especially last game of the season that they're wanting that they are gonna want to get 
uh, last game of the season. But right behind them, of course, is the Pittsburgh Penguins with 88 points. Now, last 10 games, they're 5-5-0, and so they're just straight there at 500. Their last nine games have literally gone win-loss, 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 win. That's literally how it has gone for them. They keep going back and forth, and their last 10 just goes to show you right there. 5-5 five, five, five and 5 in their last 10. Win-loss, win-loss right there. So they got to get things under control. And their, and the last video I made talking about their, their path to making it in, they have a interesting path. They had to play Minnesota, and now they got Detroit, Chicago, and Columbus left. They beat Minnesota yesterday, which is kind of a, a surprise to me. Actually, no, I thought they were going to beat them, so not surprising me at all. And they got these three games left. So they beat the hard team in the Minnesota Wild, and they've got Chicago and Columbus in their last two. Detroit could be an interesting team, could be a hard matchup, but I think they definitely should get those wins against Chicago and Columbus. But I will say their season records against these teams is not the best right now. So, so far, they've got, uh, they got Detroit coming up uh, in the next game. Sorry about that. I'm back. So they got Detroit next game. So should be interesting, but I do think they should beat Chicago and Columbus. But they got to get the, those winning ways out of the way. I mean, they're behind by one point behind two teams that are both doing pretty strange. As I mean, the Panthers are pretty hot. The Islanders could be the team that they're hoping to knock out, right? And they're right there. They just need to get the job done. Crosby, I think those guys are going to put out their heart and soul to Huey Lewis in the news shout out. <laughs> and uh, I, they just need to go out there with their heart and soul, and I think a guy like Crosby, Malkin, Latang, I think they're going to do that. My question only is goaltending. Tristan Shari, Casey DeSmith, I watched the game yesterday, and that one, just kind of the one play that kind of sums up this team is they had the face off right off the bat, and I think it was Spurgeon just slap shot it on net, and the puck leaked through Jari, and then right there, the defense, the D-man, I don't know who it was, came in before the wild two wild player sticks were coming for the puck and he was able to bat the puck into the goalie to get the whistle and it just kind of summed up the entire play for the penguins i feel like is the goaltenders have been what has let them down i mean last playoffs louis deming is the guy that had to play for them and he was good so i i just have a bad feeling for the penguins even if they get in i feel like they got a pretty good chance of getting just stomped right out of there by the boston bruins because they're definitely gonna i don't think they're gonna snag the first place spot but the buffalo sabers are still technically in the hunt five four and one in their last 10 so a little above 500 there so their season's right now right so they got five games left which is what keeps them in it so if they win those two games they have in hand against the teams above them two wins that's six points get put those six points on the board they're tied with the top guys so they still really are in the race and their games left are interesting so carolina and new york right now with buffalo they just brought in devin levi and they had a strange win against detroit yesterday and levi was the goaltender there so levi so far i think this season and he is is he two and one or three and oh i can't remember but levi uka pekalukinen so they got good goaltenders now so overall they just need to put it all together and just stomp out the victory right but they have a hard path ahead of them and i mean all the teams all have a hard path ahead of them but their season records against the teams that they're going to be playing is something you got to look at so against carolina two and oh this season for carolina sweeping them so far buffalo not at looking good there new york now they did just recently beat new york with devin levi's uh debut so that could be an interesting matchup there that they could secretly snag new jersey two and oh i mean two and sorry one and one <laughs> against new jersey this season so once again pretty tight there it could go either way ottawa though two and one to ottawa and Columbus to close out the season. So ahead of them, they have an interesting lineup ahead of them. So I don't know. I don't know. I like. I would like to say that they have a chance to win those two games, and then it comes all down to the last three if they can make it in. But I just can't say that because they've just got too many hard— I mean, Carolina, New York, uh, New Jersey, and I know which is Ottawa just got eliminated from contention, but they're still a decent team. I mean, they're the team right behind them that just got eliminated— so it's not like they have an easy path ahead of them. So I don't know. I don't know. If they pull it off, I would be astounded. Because even if they pull it off, they're tied. If they win those two games in hand, they're only tied. They have to win those three last games, and they got to hope the teams ahead of them don't pull ahead even more. 
So that's kind of the real question. So as it stands right now, you could look at it as a pretty good chance for the Buffalo Sabres to make it in. If they're a good good enough team to make the playoffs, they should make it. But they win. let's say they win those two games. It comes down to those final three. They're tied with these guys. Do you think they have a better shot than the Islanders, who have Philadelphia, Washington, and Montreal ahead of them? I don't think so. So that's all I got to say about the Buffalo Sabres. And, of course, the Ottawa Senators, I've crossed them out as they are out after that crazy game. So that is all I have to say. Just a little bit of a crazy look at the board here. So, so far, I'm going to still say my prediction is it's going to be the Panthers in the number one and the Penguins. I think the Islanders are going to get pushed out, even though it's surprising because they got Philadelphia, Washington, Montreal going into it. And maybe they go in a little bit overconfident and they lose two out of three of those games and the Penguins win two out of their three and they get the one point advantage. So that is all I have to say. So thank you for watching this. If you enjoyed, please feel free to pick up your free subscription down below. I'm begging you. I want some more subscribers, so please do that. And uh, until next time, have an amazing day. Too sweet. And ta-ta for now.